morning. Good morning. Happy Thursday. It is the start of uh, week seven, right? Is that what we're on now? Man, we're getting there. So week seven, NFL gets rolling. Broncos Saints, Dodgers last night. Great game. I go three and one. They don't let Bueller pitch the fifth inning. A little bit of sour grapes about that. Would Wish I would have just bet his under with the runs. Um, but it is what it is. He pitched really well. Um, pitches four innings, gets the trouble in the second inning, and then – Man, if you love sports, that was like a perfect moment. He gets two guys, it bases loaded, one out, and he strikes out both guys, Alvarez and then Lindor on a 3-2 pitch. Just an absolute beauty. Bueller, big, big, big spot for him. Dodgers go to the bullpen, and they get five innings out of the bullpen. And of course, they pitch shutout baseball um, in game two. It's like it, it just, just when you think you have things figured out, right? So all about momentum. The Mets were playing from behind. You know, um, just harder that way. It is uh, very interesting to hear the pitchers after the game talk about the cold weather making the ball move way more than it typically moves. Um, something to think about, even though that game went over yesterday as Muncie hits the home run in the ninth. Maybe tonight um, the under is a good play. I think the Dodgers win again tonight. I'm not sure if they close it out in New York. I hope they do. Flaherty will pitch game five against Senga, but tonight is a mismatch. The Dodgers are going to throw out Yamamoto. He got his nerves out of the way. He pitched really well against San Diego in a much in a must-win spot. He's pitched in big spots before in Japan. I, I like him tonight. I like him a lot. It's a completely different style than Bueller. It's gonna be hard to pick up one. And in reverse, um, the Mets are throwing out Quintana, the lefty. Yeah, eh, eh. it's just eh with him. And the Dodgers now feel good. I think if that game would have been four nothing yesterday, just ended that way, maybe. Uh, the Mets would feel better about going into today. But, man, Otani hits that bomb. Then it kind of kills any chance of a momentum. The Mets, if they get down tonight, I think the Dodgers can roll them. Dodgers win again, and then it would be an elimination game uh, tomorrow night with Senga and uh, Flaherty. So, I'll have bets out for that. Guardians, Yankees, what's that, 5 o'clock today? This is a great schedule. Love when they had these baseball games at 4 or 5 o'clock. I refuse to, to like chase um, – excuse me. I refuse to chase the Guardians here because I know I'm just betting with my heart. I don't know. Um, Schmidt's kind of tough. Pretty much a 50-50 game based on the line. Yankees are a slight favorite. Uh, who knows? But we'll watch, and hopefully the Guardians will win. But the Yankees are not winning the World Series. I know they're not winning the World Series, especially if the Dodgers get there. So looking forward to that. Um, let's talk Broncos Saints here for a second. Um, because this is, if there was ultimate, if there was a, you know, a stay away game, an ultimate stay away game, it's got to be this one. If, if Or you just got to bet the Saints and take the three points because this is going to be a ridiculous game. There's so many injuries. I, you, you literally could do a 30-minute podcast just on the injuries on the offensive line on both teams. Then you factor in linebackers and corners. I don't even know where to go. Receivers, like it's just the who's who of who's not playing and they got two rookie quarterbacks. Sean Payton goes back to Denver. He coached 16 years there. I can't believe it was 16 years. It's a long time. So he goes back to, uh, excuse me, he goes back to New Orleans as the Denver coach. Spencer Rattler, Bo Nix, they're honoring Drew Brees at half. To, I have no idea what's going to happen in this game, but I, I would not want to give three points. Taysom Hill may or may not play. The Saints have some young receivers that made some catches last week, although – they were, you know, somewhat getting their butts kicked. So I don't know what that means. But, yeah, I, I don't really think it's – if you just want to bet tonight, just bet the Dodgers. Uh, stay away from the NFL game. It just feels like uh, literally a 50-50 game. Like I don't even have – I don't know enough about these offensive linemen, the backup offensive linemen. Both offensive lines aren't great anyway. Saints couldn't stop the run last week. So – um, that feels like a stay away game. Two football games I wanted to point out here um, on, on this pod, and then we'll break everything down here as the week goes on. But Seahawks Falcons line makes no sense. Falcons are favored by three. Line hasn't moved. You would think the Falcons would be more of a four and a half or a five point favorite. Something to look into there. Monitor that. If you like the Falcons, jump on them now. If you like the Seahawks, wait. Buffalo line just keeps skyrocketing all the way up to nine, nine and a half this morning. Leave that alone. Uh, you'll probably get a better value at some point. It's got to go down. That feels like a really big jump. Amari Cooper's just joining the team. The Titans are a weird team when they're nine point underdogs. They seem to win a lot of those games. That one jumped out at me as staying away from it. 
And then the third one was, where did we go? Lions, Vikings. Vikings won half point favorites. If you like the Lions, jump on them now. I think the Lions will be favored by the time that game kicks off. I, I think the Vikings, the the basically what I think is the the money. I don't know. This isn't my analysis of the game, but the money. It would be really hard to bet on the Vikings this week because if you've been betting on the Vikings for five weeks in a row, you're feeling good. At, at what point do you realize the luck's going to go out? And if you haven't bet on the Vikings people don't like jumping on the bandwagon, right? Like, cause you just assume things are going to go the other way. You don't want to be late. So it feels like a lot of money will go in the lions. They don't have Hutchinson, which I think kills them in the playoffs. I think it prevents them from winning the super bowl. I think it's that big of a deal, but I don't know if the regular season, it really, really matters. Um, as far as actually, if they win the game or not, you know, they're a much better team with him, but on a week by week basis, um, he doesn't really account for maybe a half a point in the spread, but that's just the reality of the position he plays. It's the playoffs where he can just disrupt the whole game. I mean, he's really good. Maybe I'm underestimating it. Maybe it's worth more than a point, uh, more than a half a point, closer to a point. But my, I guess my overall point is, especially right this second, I, I think the Lions play with adrenaline. They want to play. Um, you know, it's the Ewing theory from the 99 NBA playoffs, which is the team plays better when their best player goes out, um, at least for a period of time. I think the defensive line for the Lions will play well. So if you like the Lions, I would jump on them um, as soon as possible. And um, yeah, those were the games that kind of jumped out as far as the Lions. All these injuries and a lot of moving parts. I like to, you know, to be completely transparent, I don't have time to watch every single game. I think I said this last week. So during the week is kind of when I catch up. And then Friday slash Sunday is when I'll break down all the games. Sunday, I definitely do it. But Friday, if there's something I already like, there was nothing this week that felt like that Bucks game against the Eagles a couple weeks ago. Um, the, if you made me choose right this second, my favorite game that jumped out was the Texans. Because anytime Stroud's getting points. But if you dig deeper into that, um, it's not the greatest matchup for the Texans. They are going to Green Bay. The Packers defense look good. I don't know if I really want to bet – and when you think about betting a lot of your hard-earned money, you say to yourself, like, who am I betting against and who am I betting on? And betting on Stroud feels great. But, like, if you if you have to pick one game to bet on, do you really want to bet against Green Bay at home? It's like those, those are the kind – like, if they're a good team, that home field is worth so much. I don't know. It, it just feels like there's probably better value bets. So that's my two cents on that. Um, excited about the Dodgers. I think that's where – most of my energy will be going to tonight as unless something changes, I, I don't see how uh, I can bet the Saints Broncos game, even the over unders, whatever I do at the Saints seems to kind of go left. My initial opinion of them for the beginning of the season is spot on, but on a week by week basis, um, I just can't get them right. I had the under in their total points. I can't believe they scored 27 points on the second quarter and then no points and just weird. So, all right, um, enjoy the night. I will certainly have prop bets out. And, you know, Jay Mart will have his prop bets out. Jack will have bets if he has them. And, yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, I'll see you guys in the morning. Hope everybody has a good day. Uh, reach out. I got a couple uh, appointments. What's it, 1030 and 1130. So, yeah, if you need me for anything, just reach out, and um, I'll make myself available. Have a good day, guys.